there are over 300 million people on Earth who are clinically obese. It's an epidemic. Some of them are truly supersized, weighing in up to half a ton. Mm. This show travels the world to meet these people to discover what life is really like when you're over six times heavier than the average human. Being this big is not pretty, but it's the realism of the struggle that I have. It's difficult to move, hard to keep your job, and sometimes the only way out is to go under the knife. There's no limit. I love eating food. This is obesity, where people are fighting for their livelihood, freedom, and even life. I'm either going to conquer being fat or it's going to kill me trying. In this episode, Mexico's fattest man, who's been bedbound for over a decade, takes to the streets to warn about an obsession that nearly killed him. An Indian teenager makes a radical decision to rescue his health by cutting out over half his stomach. Totally now, I'm mentally tensed, very much scared about how will the surgery go. And in the USA, a supersized trucker faces a physical exam that could change his life forever. Failure will cost him his job and worse. If he doesn't do anything, he'll die a slow death. No doubt. Thirty-four-year-old Attila Safi has been driving long-haul rigs from his Tennessee home for two years. I got dibs on the buggy. This right here is a heart attack in a bag, and it's my favorite. Like 86% of America's three million truck drivers, Attila's overweight. Oh, this is the garbage aisle. Garbage aisle? Yes. Well, I see the cakes. A moment on your lips on is your years lips. on your hips. Years. <laughs> of course, we still get, you know, junk food. We're American. This way of life has propelled his weight to nearly 500 pounds. That's almost a quarter of a ton. And if he doesn't change, he could face a dire future. Hang on a second. I got to throw on my seatbelt. Oh, oh, there you go. My seatbelt doesn't fit. I have struggled my whole life with weight. There's so many things. Uh, I pretty much have to have uh, a for real handicap stall in order to use the restroom, which is really sad and very inconvenient. Going to the movie theater, I don't fit. When I'm at a restaurant, I have to sit at a table. I can't sit at a booth. The way that I feel about it is I'm gonna fight the good fight until one of us wins. I'm either gonna conquer being fat or it's gonna kill me trying. Despite his struggles with his size, Attila's life has recently taken a turn for the better. Give me those, and then you grab the milk and these eggs. I'll take all of those off of you. He's married Heather and bought their dream home in Tennessee. I love my home. And so for my wife and I to just be in each other's presence and, and hang out, I mean, we've been married a little over three years. And we're still on our honeymoon. For me, it was love at first sight, you know? <laughs> but I mean, I just, I liked his heart and I liked what he had to, to offer. But this blissful life is under threat. Attila's size and ongoing health issues mean he's at risk of failing a government-enforced trucker medical. Are they gonna take away my ability to work because I just failed one little test? It's just one more thing that we have to stress about as truck drivers. This biannual test will take place in two days during his next long haul. Failure will cost him his career and livelihood. Attila strives to be more active and to eat a healthier diet. But his history of addiction has made the task near impossible. I quit doing drugs and then I quit smoking. Food for me is like a drug. Anyone who's been an addict would understand my struggle. If you've not been an addict, it's easy to just point the finger and say, well, it's just willpower. It is willpower, but you're matching your willpower against a mountain. With his job on the line, Attila needs to get a grip on his food cravings. 
taking the skins off of the Italian sausage, and I have buffalo sausage also. But it doesn't come easy. Woo, hot mama. And I ain't talking about you. I, I make good food. You don't get to be this big and uh, not know what you like. <laughs> this is my job when you cook dinner. Attila often eats over 2,500 calories in a single meal. That's the number of calories a healthy male consumes in a whole day. I took what's probably a pretty healthy meal and made it not healthy by making it better. <laughs> this right now is me in real life. It all boils down to willpower until I'm absolutely full my brain won't stop saying, eat, 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 eat. Anyone who's ever been addicted to anything can relate just how hard it is to stand in front of the thing that you have the, the trouble with and then moderate yourself. With food, I gotta live with my drug forever. Uh, you can't just stop eating. Well, you could. Wouldn't last very long. <laughs> While he fights an ongoing battle to control his food intake at home, he struggles even harder on the road. Long hours, monotony, and stressful deadlines all take their toll. I'll snack on anything, because I don't always get to get good food when I'm out on the road. I like sweet, I like the cakes, and the cookies, the brownies, the home-baked stuff. I like the salty stuff, like the chips and the sunflower seeds and whatnot, which are loaded with salt. You know, when I when I eat out of control, it makes me sad. But while I'm eating out of control, I'm 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 happy. I do worry because I mean, the last thing I want is something to happen to him on the road, and you know, whether it be a heart attack or a stroke or whatever, you know, I, I worry about him. Attila sets off, hauling dairy products on a 2,700-mile run, ending in Greenville, South Carolina. When I get back behind the wheel and I start driving, everything's good. As long as the wheels are turning, I'm a happy boy. As happy as he is to be back on the road, Attila's upcoming health exam is continuing to trouble him. Certainly, I have trepidation about meeting with him. Nobody wants bad news. In just over 24 hours, he'll find out if he'll ever be able to drive his big rigs again. <laughs> 48-year-old Manuel Uribe, Mexico's heaviest man, is preparing for one of the most important days of his life. <laughs> Nicknamed the half-ton man, Manuel is about to leave his home for the first time in six months. <laughs> He'll be taking a huge gamble with his health to spread the word about the disease that nearly killed him and still could. <laughs> Completely immobile, Manuel must rely on family and friends for round-the-clock care. Making life even more uncomfortable is an invasive bacterial skin infection the locals called Disipela. Disipela que le dio, verdad? Le dio tres veces la Disipela seguido, entonces lo dejó bien aporreado y con úlcera. Es un dolor muy doloroso. Eso es células muertas de la piel. Se ve feo, pero yo no camino porque pues tengo muy grande esto y tú sabes, es mucho peso para mis piernas. Seven years ago, Manuel became the world's heaviest man alive, at just over 1,200 pounds. Although chubby as a child, 
It was in his 20s when his weight spiraled out of control. Y la verdad es que de joven, tú sabes, cuando uno está en la etapa de adolescencia, no era obes. Pero algo que pasó, yo creo que en el 88 fue que me fui a Estados Unidos y allá cambió mi vida. Comía mucha pizza y mucha mucha soda de de delito y así. Estaba engordando muy fuerte, muy rápido. Pues no lo sentí hasta que ya tenía 300 y pico de kilos y así quedó. Entonces pasaron los años y yo seguí engordando hasta que me tuve que venir a México, ¿me entiendes? Por por el, también por la obesidad. By 2001, Manuel could no longer walk. He's been bedbound ever since. Yo me quería suicidar. No aceptaba que, que yo ya estaba confinado a una cama y que pues que tal vez a lo mejor iba a morir de, también de obesidad y que... Pero gracias a Dios conocí a Cristo, ¿verdad? Eso fue fundamental. De ahí para acá cambió mi vida. As well as finding God, in 2005 he met local psychologist Jorge Rodriguez. He played a crucial role in mending Manuel's tortured mind. Imagínate estar en un cuarto las 24 horas y solamente estar viviendo de tus Manuel se sentía solo, solo este triste, eh, un poquito no sé si abandonado, pero el día de hoy este con su persona ya logra un, un grado de aceptación y al día de hoy pues yo lo veo este estable emocionalmente contento con su vida, eso es muy importante, o sea, que él este esté luchando, ¿no? Gracias. 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 Back on the road to recovery. Manuel has shed 300 pounds through careful dieting. In his condition, meaningful exercise is not an option. Gone are the greasy tacos washed down by liters of sugary soda. Now he begins his day with a five egg omelet, fresh grapefruit and plenty of water. Lino. Apúrate, porque ya tengo mucha hambre. Y viví que me exigió tanto. Manuel hasn't given up the fight to get out of bed and start walking again. This is not only vital for his self-esteem, it'll help him with a new crusade. To use his tragic story as a stark warning against obesity. Mexico has now overtaken the United States as the fattest nation on earth, with 70% of adults overweight. Nos hicimos muy también a la idea de los Estados Unidos de comer comida. ¿Por qué? Porque las grandes cadenas de, de comida rápida ya entraron a México. Y ese es el problema. Even more worrying, Mexico is the world leader in juvenile obesity. Su peso inicial fue 65 65 kilogramos. sí. A third of adolescents are now overweight or obese. Yo soy el último ya de los super obesos que hay en el mundo, porque ya se murieron. Y no quiero que ya haya obesidad o que sufra la gente como yo estoy sufriendo, ¿no? To make sure this happens, Manuel's arranged to speak at his local church about the dangers of obesity. But nothing about this trip will be simple, as he has to travel in his bed. Por si, si acaso, por si... <laughs> Outside, it's over 40 degrees. The searing Mexican heat will place his body under great stress and play havoc with his diseased legs. Siempre que pasa esto, yo no voy porque tengo muchos temores. No pasa nada, todo está bien, todo va a salir muy bien. Not only is this a massive physical challenge, it's a logistical headache, requiring a small army of friends, family, medics, and some heavy duty lifting equipment. I am ready. And what's more, Manuel's journey will take him through some of Monterrey's most notorious highways. Who 
Pune, India, home to 19-year-old Vedant Mungi. He may not be in the same thousand-pound league as Manuel, but given his age and bad eating habits, he's heading right down that path. I love eating food. There's no limit. I just cannot stay away from eating anything. The street food is it, it's very oily food and it's very yummy, spicy Indian food. He's already contracted type 2 diabetes linked to his obesity. Knowing the risks this diagnosis brings, heart attack, kidney failure and even amputation, he's going for stomach reduction surgery. It may sound extreme, but in India, this has become a regular occurrence. Very much scared about how will the surgery go? Where will it be? Everything will be okay or not? As he approaches his life-changing operation, a temporary distraction is the Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations erupting around him. The September festival of the elephant-headed god is one of the most important for this area of India and is comparable to Christmas in the Western world. It is a very special part of the year where everyone goes around, just enjoy themselves, just dancing all over the city. And it's, it's quite a very memorable time of the year. Mainly because, for many, celebrations revolve around food. Tons of food. Normally, Vedant would be gorging on these oily street snacks. But a strict pre-surgery diet means it's all off-limits. Tempting, very tempting. Which is unfortunate, as back at home, mum and sister are busy preparing a mouth-watering Ganesh feast. Ganesh loves foods, so all this is made because he loves the food a lot. Even Ganesh has the big stomach, like Vedans. <laughs> so it's like that. The star of the show is a small dumpling called Modak. I love coconut, so basically it is all mixture of coconut and stuffing of coconut, so it is very good. Quite. It may not look like classic fatty food, but these little morsels pack a sizable punch. Just three hold the same number of calories as a double cheeseburger. In whole day, I guess he will eat 10 to 15 almost in one day. It is very tempting as well now. <laughs> Eating habits like these, combined with a strong reluctance to diet and exercise, means Vedant, at just 19, is nudging 300 pounds and over twice his ideal body weight. Basically, sometimes when I eat, I feel sleepy and dizziness is there. And I'm very tired to go in the gym and work out, go to the treadmill and run, run, run. That's, that's not pretty much I like. Having shown no willpower to curb his weight naturally and having contracted type 2 diabetes, Vedant is counting on a sleeve gastrectomy to set his life in a new direction. This slice and staple procedure will remove nearly 85% of his stomach. I'm a bit worried because this is my first surgery of my life. Very much scared about how will the surgery go. In India, this procedure can cost upwards of 6,000 US dollars. It can also lead to serious complications and doesn't have a 100% success rate. But for his parents, trying to protect Vedant's future is worth the risk. One side we are very happy that he something will happen and something will change in his life, physical point of view, and which will help him his future. And the other part, there is some tense because this is first surgery in our family also. So we are worried about it. Vedant is part of India's new obesity pandemic, where a large waistline can be taken as a sign of prosperity. 20 years of fast-track economic growth has given rise to a new wealthy, more sedentary urban population that's feasting on heavy, calorie-rich food. A quarter are obese and stomach stapling has become an increasingly popular solution. The city has changed so drastically. In a couple of years, there's nothing we find a healthy food outside we can eat. Everyone are liking the taste of their food. I have problems with my weight. I wouldn't like anyone else to be in the same problem as I am. 
It's time for Vedant to set off for hospital. Now the reality of what he signed on for strikes home. Someone is gonna perform a surgery on me. So there's, there will be some tearing and all of all things on my body. So that's, that's the a bit scary about that. In 2012, Indian surgeons performed 15,000 bariatric procedures. That figure is expected to double in two years as Indians increasingly look for a quick obesity fix. Vedant is hoping to resolve his obesity and diabetes through the skills of one of India's top surgeons, Dr. Shashank Shah. Ten years back, maybe I was doing 100 operations a year. And now over 10 years, I'm doing probably 100 operations a month. <laughs> Typically, Indians have much more fat at a body mass index. Over centuries, they were undernourished. So genetically, the body was designed to live with lesser calories. And now when the same generation is exposed to calorie-dense food, much less activity. And if you look at them, even though they don't look huge, but they have a very large percentage of fat. And that is why India is a global capital of type 2 diabetes. It's unfortunate truth. Surgery is often the last resort. So it's an extreme decision. Vedant's nerves are kicking in. Afraid of the surgery, but afraid that my body will get stitches for the first time. Feeling very tense now. Heartbeats are bouncing up. In Monterrey, Mexico, Manuel's big day has arrived. Mexico's heaviest man will be leaving his home for the first time in six months. But he won't be leaving his bed. It's a place he's been stranded for over a decade. I llevo 12 años en una cama, como si estuviera en un hospital, hacer del bar, bañarme. It's difficult, no? Así que vamos a ir de blanco como el palomo. With Manuel bedbound. A complex removal operation has been mobilized, using a team of friends, family, paramedics, and even a forklift. I am ready. Go. Manuel's making this monumental effort for a speech, organized with his local church, about the dangers of obesity. Well, I think there's a very big problem in Mexico. The day of the day is Manuel and his bed will be traveling on a specially modified vehicle, named after his nickname, Meme. But with new modifications to the truck, increasing its size to nine feet across, it'll be extremely hazardous maneuvering through Monterey's busy streets in 40 degree heat. Fitting the bed correctly is vital. If it slips off while he's speeding along, it could be fatal. This is Manuel's first trip outdoors in six months. Before the Meme Mobile was built, he had barely seen life outside his four walls for seven years. Me se subió a este Meme Mobile. Me acuerdo mucho que Meme me decía, verdaderamente hoy entiendo lo que es la naturaleza tan hermosa que antes yo no miraba. Entonces, pues para Meme fue algo muy, algo nuevo. Parecía como niño. Tiro, tiro con la ala. Está muy pegado el... Tiro con el camión. 
¡Muero de hambre! On the way, he calls a pit stop at some favorite food halls. Bájate, bájate, checa las orillas. Buenas tardes, bienvenidos. Ah, me da una orden de una pizza grande. Ok. Una hamburguesa doble y unas papas. Manuel's famous in these parts. Ándale. The locals always eager to meet him. Buen provecho. Ah, gracias, voy a ponerlo aquí. Eventually, Manuel reaches his local church. He plans to use the food he bought as a shock prop for his obesity plea. Bueno, la plática de hoy en realidad va a ser hablando sobre la obesidad en mi vida. Yo comía muy diferente a lo que como ahora. Yo me podía comer un día normal una pizza. Refresco de dos litros, unos tacos, una hamburguesa doble y con papas. Mm, pero tienen que saber cómo comer, si ¿Sí me entienden, tienes que saber y tener el conocimiento que tú te puedes comer una mejor un, un pedazo o dos de estos, pero como un premio. Ahora les voy a enseñar algo que hoy como. Ahora comemos vegetales. Sabían que yo al principio esto decía. Ah, esto nada más lo comen los conejos. Yo quiero explicarle a ustedes y quiero explicarle a todo el mundo eso, que sí se puede, sí se puede bajar de peso, sí se puede estar sano. Nada más tenemos que cambiar. Muchas gracias. 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 No lo podía gracias. Creer. Nunca, porque nunca había visto a alguien tan grande. Entendí que que tengo que, que tenemos que cuidar la salud por por para no Mission accomplished. Manuel calls it a day at his favorite burger joint. This place prides itself on its whopping two pound Big Mama burgers. Mmm, huele bien. But Manuel's devised a healthier way of eating his. En una burguesa lo que te hace daño es el pan. Entonces, las cadenas que venden hamburguesas pueden hacer esto sencillo. Yo no digo que no coman, pero que coman sano. After years of fame from being fat, Manuel's determined his legacy will be for fighting against fat. While Manuel fights obesity in Mexico, Attila Safi is fighting for his job. It's a tense time, and a good night's sleep won't come easily. Being this big is not pretty. It's not exactly pretty when you have to wear something like this in order to go to sleep. Traveling across America's deep south on his way to Greenville, South Carolina, trucker Attila Safi is about to face the toughest test of his life. With my job, there's government restrictions. Uh, they're afraid that we're a health risk. At nearly 500 pounds, Attila's not just gambling with his health, he's gambling with his career. His route will be interrupted by a mandatory trucker medical. Fail, and he's out of a job. Are they going to take away my ability to work because I just failed one little test? <laughs> As a former drug addict, Attila has a long history of addiction. But these days, his cravings are solely for food. I plan my life around food, honestly. Uh, I make sure that I've got food stocked in the truck. God forbid I go a day without eating. There's restaurants that I have throughout the United States that I know that I like. And if I know that I've just eaten now, and I'm about five hours away from that other restaurant, um, I'll look forward the whole way to going to have that other restaurant. This is one reason I know that I treat food like a drug. As Attila reaches the end of his shift, he's got only one thing on his mind. I'm getting kind of hungry, so uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull off and catch me something to eat. Every time I step out of this truck, I know people are watching me. Every time I walk around in this world, I know that people are making judgments about me just based solely on the way that I look. And so it hurts me to think, 
you know, that I'm being judged incorrectly. Attila has been trying to eat more healthily for the last 18 months, but still finds choosing the right food tough. I'm pretty good at taking a good thing like salad and making it bad for you. Normally I have a battle between the fried chicken and the baked chicken, but today it's not even an issue because we've got turkey and I love turkey and dressing. So greens, black eyed peas and a piece of cornbread. Uh, I'm gonna have to uh, get a side of gravy because they don't have it on the buffet. He joins fellow big rig haulers and the conversation quickly turns to food. I want to know, do you eat when you're bored, when you're, when you're stopped? Yes, sir, you bet. Yep. You don't even think about it. You're going down the road, you're bored, you pick up something and start eating. Yeah. See, the thing about the bad food is that it's convenient. Yeah, that's Perfect what I... example, I'm going to go get a veggie sub over at the sandwich shop. But the line is backed up. There's nobody sitting in front of the greasy chicken joint. <laughs> Give me four chicken strips, a roll, <laughs> a couple of chicken livers, and let me go, because yeah. I need to get, I need to go. Yeah. Okay, I've got to ask, what is your comfort food? Cheetos. <laughs> As Attila prepares for sleep, he is reminded of the other ways his weight affects him day to day. This machine right here, it's called the CPAP. It stands for uh, Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. What it does, it keeps air flowing into my nose and into my lungs. One bad thing about being this big is um, uh, as your neck gets bigger, uh, the weight while you're sleeping, it, it relaxes your throat and it'll cause it to collapse. <clears throat> but it's the realism of the struggle that I have. It's being this big is not pretty. It's not pretty when I'm walking around. It's not pretty when I'm eating. And um, it's not exactly pretty when you have to wear something like this in order to go to sleep. But I put it on and it does its thing. And then I said, actually forcing air up my nose right now, which is why I'm talking funny. Attila suffers from sleep apnea that's linked to his obesity. If he didn't wear the mask, he'd be more at risk of dying in his sleep. The next morning, Attila heads to his physical. Every two years, truckers must prove they can safely operate their vehicles and don't have a condition that could incapacitate them. Attila doesn't even know his true weight. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I weigh 480 pounds plus or minus 20 pounds because uh, the only scale that I have found that weighs me is built to weigh trucks. And every time I've done that, it says 480 pounds. They weigh in 20 pound increments so it could be somewhere between 460 and 500. It's judgment time. Attila's about to learn his fate. Hanging on this physical is his trucker salary, livelihood, and blissful life with new wife, Heather. Attila, what I need to tell you is that you are on the edge of a cliff. Trucker Attila Safi has just interrupted his run to take in a mandatory government-enforced physical that could change his life forever. If he fails, it'll cost him his career and livelihood nervous you know it's a high stress thing it's not just me uh my best friend is 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 a fit uh person and uh he has anxiety when when you know every dot physical that he's gone through because it's the same thing he worries that they're gonna find one thing wrong with him and um you know disqualify him from being able to work first up the medical assistant takes attila's body function readings what I need you to do is just go in there and give me what you can and bring it out when you die, sir. OK, appreciate it. Step on up there, sir. I'm going to check your body mass index real quick. Oh, it's bad. Just relax that arm. It's a big cup to fill, man. Oh, yeah. What color is this? Red. Orange. 
green. Excellent. Great job. Um, I'll get your paperwork together and the doctor will be right with you. Okay? All right. Thanks, sir. Next, he's given a rigorous physical. I tell you, Dr. McElligan, how are you? All right. How are you? Okay. Uh, what I need you to do, since your size and stuff, we don't have any shorts to fit you, but I need you to take off your shirt if you would. Right. Okay. I want you to lay down for me. I'm never going to get back up. Breathe quietly and we'll listen to your heart. Relax your tongue. That's easy for you to say. Now bend your knee up for me, bend it. Straighten it. Now let's sit up for me. That's pretty good. I want you to squat down like this as far as you can. Now hold it. Hold it. Finally, it's the moment of truth. You can get up and off the table. You can hold a squat. You got good prehension. You are safe to drive. Thank you. You're welcome. OK? Uh, so what exactly did I weigh? 480. 480? Yes. Going for you. Attila can carry on trucking, but that's where the good news ends. Attila, what I need to tell you is that you are on the edge of a cliff. And if you continue to gain weight, you're going to probably die uh, before you reach the age of 50. But you've got time, and you could actually make it and lose it. It's like you've got to win the Super Bowl this year, buddy. It's going to take a while to get it off you, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. You're young enough to do it. Hopefully, I'll see you again next year. Okay, thank you. Dr. John McElligott specializes in truckers' health. He's very aware of the importance of keeping them fit and productive. But you have to remember about the truckers. They are the heartbeat of America. You stop the trucks and this whole economy collapses. You know, it's just such a big population, it's hard to deal with. It's like the size of a, a small New York City to try to get all the truckers to, to, to get healthy. Attila is rehabable for a big boy. He's either got to do it now or he'll never do it. If he doesn't do anything, he'll die a slow death, no doubt. Simple as that. With the doctor telling me that the average age of death of a large truck driver is in the mid 50s, it's one more thing that I can use to try to propel me forward on, on this journey. It's been the wake up call Attila needed. Now he must use every scrap of willpower to conquer his food addiction and improve his health. Gives me the opportunity to burn some calories to try and lose weight. I'm steaming. If I let somebody else unload it for me, I'm not burning the calories, they are. And not every place will let me unload at their facility, but the places that do, I'm gonna unload. I'm going to pursue anything that I think would give me a better chance of success. And there's no shame in trying. If you have to try a thousand times, you only have to be successful once. Like Attila, Vedan also faces an uncertain future as he prepares to go under the knife. Totally, I'm mentally tensed, very much scared about how will the surgery go. In Pune, India, Vedant Mungi is facing an uncertain future. He's 19, over double his ideal body weight, and has contracted type 2 diabetes. Because of obesity, you cannot resist diabetes and heart attacks are, a man can even end up his life. Today, he's following a growing Indian trend by using extreme surgery to try and rescue his failing health. It's a radical and risky move, but one his family is prepared to take. Comfortable? You will be asleep in five minutes. This is my first surgery of my life. Totally, I'm mentally tensed, very much scared about how will the surgery go. One of India's leading bariatric surgeons, Dr. Shah, is about to perform a sleeve gastrectomy. 
removing roughly 85% of Vedant's stomach. In the future, just small food portions will leave him feeling full for longer. A tiny puncture is made in the skin. Once Vedant is unconscious, Dr. Shah pumps his abdomen with carbon dioxide. This gives more room to perform the delicate operation. A lot of gas is going in. It's a large volume, capacious abdominal cavity. He makes small incisions so that a camera and surgical equipment can enter the abdomen. Now we start by inspection of the liver. The moment I touch the liver, it becomes yellow. That's a lot of fat deposition in the liver. The yellow mass is fat. That's choking his major organs. Before tackling the stomach, Dr. Shah must cut this away. Lower part of the stomach, where small intestine is connected. Then the critical moment. So we are almost set to fire. Slicing Vedant's stomach in two. Now, this is a suturing device, or what is called a stapler. The gun is fired. The stomach is divided and sealed at the same time with the device. Using his medical stapler gun, Dr. Shah can divide Vedant's stomach from top to bottom. Now, this is the last division. As you can see here, the division is complete. This is the part of the stomach which is removed. Now this part of the stomach can slowly come out. Because it's compressible, it can come out very easily. You can see how long this is. And you can see here, this is the part of the stomach which was removed along this curvature. The whole procedure took just one hour. Vedant should lose 90 to 95% of excess fat in the next year. Now the boy is expected to have his diabetes result maybe within 48 hours. His hunger, his craving will be far more suppressed. Slowly his life is going to change to a healthy, normal boy with a healthy figure and normal weight. Just 24 hours later, Vedant checks out of hospital. It's now up to him to change his habits to guarantee a healthy future. I don't think everyone should go under this.